Alright, so in this video I'm going to talk about molecular equations, complete ionic equations, and net ionic equations. So suppose I have the following precipitation reaction. I have aqueous silver nitrate plus aqueous sodium bromide yields solid silver bromide plus aqueous sodium nitrate. So this is what we call a molecular equation. So molecular equation. It's basically the simplest form of the equation. It shows the formula units for, for all of the compounds as if they existed as molecules. But in reality, in solution, they don't exist as molecules. They exist as aqueous ions. So they exist as just ions which are surrounded by each ion, each individual ion is surrounded by water molecules. But this only applies to the aqueous reactants and products. So in the molecular equation, if we identify which ones are aqueous and which ones are not aqueous, well, it looks like this one's aqueous, the silver nitrate. Sodium bromide also looks aqueous, and the sodium nitrate is aqueous too. The only one that's not aqueous is the silver bromide. So this is a solid. So that means that in solution, silver nitrate, sodium bromide, and sodium nitrate exist as free ions that are uh, each surrounded by water molecules. So we can actually rewrite this equation in the following form. So my silver nitrate, that's aqueous, so that means I can bust it up into its constituent ions. So that's going to be silver ion, Ag+, and the nitrate ion, NO3-, minus. sodium bromide is aqueous, so I can do the same thing. So that's going to give me a sodium ion, Na+, and it's also going to give me a bromide ion, Br-. Minus. That does it for my reactants. Now I can fill out my products. AgBr, we're not going to bust that up into its constituent ions because it's not aqueous. So in other words, this is an insoluble ionic compound, so it won't dissociate into its ions when we put it in water. So that's going to be AgBr. That's a solid. And then for the rest of our products, it looks like we're going to have a sodium ion and a plus, and we're going to have a nitrate ion, which is NO3 minus. So this equation that we've written now, this is called a complete ionic equation. So complete ionic equation. So this actually shows, it's a, it's a little bit more uh, accurate for a description of what's actually going on in this solution. So we can actually simplify this equation down a little bit further uh, by basically taking a mathematical approach. And by that I mean if there's anything that appears on both sides of the equation, then we can cancel it out. So is there any, are there any ions or compounds that are on both sides of the equation that we can cancel out? That's the question. So it looks like I have a sodium on both sides, so I can cancel that one out. Sodium ion on the left cancels out with sodium ion on the right. And then we also have a nitrate ion on either side. So I can cancel out this nitrate ion here with this nitrate ion here. And it looks like we're just end up with uh, our silver ion, our bromide ion, and then the uh, silver bromide on the product side. So if I cancel out these ions that appear on both sides of the equation, by the way, there's a name for these types of ions that cancel out. We call these spectator ions. So sodium and nitrate ions, those are called spectator ions. And if we cancel the spectator ions, we'll just get silver ion plus bromide ion yields silver bromide. So silver ion plus bromide ion yields silver bromide and this is what we call a net ionic equation. A net ionic equation. Upon canceling out the spectator ions we arrive at the net ionic equation for this reaction. So this is the molecular equation 
up here, before we canceled the spectators, we had the complete ionic equation, and then after we canceled the spectator ions, now we have a net ionic equation. So let's do another example real quick uh, before we get done here. All right, so let's do this reaction. We have HCl aqueous plus KOH aqueous yields H2O water, and that is a liquid, plus KCl, which is aqueous. So this is the molecular equation for this reaction. Let's try to figure out what the complete ionic equation is. Remember, when we, we write the complete ionic equation, we're just busting up the, the soluble ionic compounds into their constituent ions. But notice that we have, okay, let, let's look at our soluble ionic compounds. Here's one, aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. But then we have water. The water is not a soluble ionic compound. There's no solution. It's just pure water. So that means we're going to leave the water alone, and there's, no, there's not going to be any ions that come from the water. So now let's write our complete ionic equation. We'll have H plus plus Cl minus plus K plus plus OH minus yields H2O. That's a liquid, not aqueous, so I'm leaving it alone. And then I end up getting K plus plus Cl minus. By the way, I haven't filled it in, but the states of matter of all of these ions, these are all aqueous. So aqueous, aqueous, and so forth. I didn't do it in the last example, but these are all aqueous. So just keep that in mind. And now, uh, so, so we've just successfully written the complete ionic equation. Now we can uh, move on to the net ionic equation by just simply canceling out the spectators. So let's see. I have an H plus over here, no H plus over here. I have a chloride ion over here. I do have another chloride ion, so I can cancel those out. Chloride ion is a spectator. I have a potassium on the left. I have another potassium ion on the right, so potassium ion is also a spectator. And the net ionic equation for this reaction, all we have to do is just omit the spectators. And we end up getting H plus plus OH minus yields H2O. H plus and OH minus are aqueous, and the H2O is a liquid. So there you go. There's just a simple lesson about molecular, complete, and net ionic equations.